morning, my friends. Paper Doc, Paper Talk time today. My name is Doc and this is an episode where I talk about fountain pens, inks, and paper, something that I think we all love or you wouldn't be here. And I welcome you to the episode that we've all been waiting for. No, just kidding. I have been looking forward to it. And um, maybe you have also a little bit, or some of you at least, because I'm finally going to ink the pens that I have purchased in Germany. I will um, go with... I will go to the desk with you and show you the inks that I chose and um, but I need to tell you ahead of time I am usually quite random with the inks that I pick it's not that I you know aim for a rainbow or muted pastelish whatever it is usually i choose colors that i feel like or maybe they're new and i haven't used them yet or um yeah just about anything that i am that that strikes my fancy on that particular day and um so i hope you'll enjoy doing this with me because it's really special i've been trying to write dry some of my pens that I had currently inked and uh, so I don't get overwhelmed by too many pens inked up as it often happens so who am I kidding it happens whatever it is what it is it's all fun and games and it's our hobby and we're doing this to enjoy it and you know everybody out there in the community does their own thing and that's the beauty of it um, some um, are able to manage and limit their pens to five a month and that's beautiful i envy you sometimes <laughs> and um, others don't and um, it's it is what it is and it's all about the fun and about enjoying our hobby and um, this is the newly inking an episode today and um, I will meet you over at the desk. Hello, hello, let's get this inking party started. This is the Parker 45 that has already been inked with Colorverse Valles Mar Marineris and the Pelican M150 it has an M nib, medium nib, and it already has been inked with Robert Oster African Gold. All of these, in case you wonder, are the pens that I have purchased this summer in Germany. All of them either at flea markets or at some at a paper store where they were as new stock. One of those is this quite old Kabeko Elite with a broad nib and I have paired it up with Ancient Copper. They're not filled yet. This is Diamine from Inkvent that I want to put into the Kabeko with A. No, this one has a broad nib. Yes, of course, for the shimmer. Here we have another Kaveco with a medium nib and I've picked Diamine Red Dragon for this guy. It's another Kaveco with a, what is this? A double broad nib. I picked the Shikurin. Here is a Parker 25 that I want to pair with the blue one, Colorverse, and another Parker where I don't know the model, and I will ink it with Colorverse Opportunity. Sweetheart. Birmingham Pen Company 
and a Mont Blanc. I think it has a, oopsie, sorry. This one has a, what looks like a double broad oblique nib. And it is a Mont Blanc, what was it, 72? Meisterstück. I am not sure. It could be 72, but I think it's 12, actually. Sorry. Next one, Milkweed, new to me for the other Mont Blanc. This one is a 342 with an M nib. This is one of those that I'm super excited about. It's a Capico with a broad oblique nib that I'm going to pair with this um, that I got a good while ago from Miss Turtle. Double raspberry Ferris wheel press. Then I have Olive Swirl. I got a bottle in Germany, teamed up with my pen friend there and placed an order together. And I will ink it. I will ink my Cabico Sport with the broad oblique nib with this guy. I mean, I will, yes, with this ink. Then I have my Pelican Silvexa with also a broad nib. I hope it's not a lefty oblique, but I don't think so. So I want to ink it with Diatramentis. Virgo because my birthday is coming up in September and I wanted a pretty crisp color for this Polish pen I think what's the company name it's so interesting sorry Go. Uh, so diamond steel blue for this Inco with a C and it has a fine nib. You'll see it once I am in the actual process of filling. So now let me make some trusted tools for the ones that take cartridges, but most of them are piston colors. And this is a Tomoe River notebook, my currently inked notebook. And that's what we will use. And I will start off with the Parker 45. inked and today I'm gonna to put the date in the beginning so I don't run out of space this is 8 21 23 and I have thoroughly <laughs> right to clean all of these pens but some you will see but well it probably will be clear that they had some residue but um well we're just gonna roll with that Parker 45 and often they have the nib size right here that's a bra This came in a set that was gifted to me by a dear pen friend and the other two inks that were in that set are these two so we'll fill those we'll fill some Parkers with those two as well so this was the first one and then I'm gonna show you again the M150 
um, not a gold nib this penny con This ink was a sample from my pen friend, Andrea, and it is Robert Oster, African Gold. Okay, this is the Parker where I don't know the model name it has takes cartridges and it came with a cartridge I'm glad about that so I am doing this come on This is not a dried up cartridge, no it's not. Some bubbles. Alright. I think I got it. I could buy the three quarter fill. Dip this because I'm sure it will not write right away. And I will better close this little bottle. Ooh, lovely color. Or something looks like a medium nib and this is I'm gonna call this Finstalo that was the flea market where I got it color purse opportunity So far, really nice, quite soft nib. I like it. That's a bit of flex. Yeah. Here's the Parker 25. Again, thank you to the viewer who told me the model name. And I have decided to this one with the other one from that set and this is a shimmer ink I don't know how this will behave in the in the Parker haven't tried it as you know so I'll see how that works out I guess I wasn't quite able to clean out that old cartridge, but whatever. Let's see. Okay. My first Parker 25 and I have always loved this ink color whenever I saw that online probably also a medium same flea market a 
bit scratchy nib. Mm. And definitely a very different feel, this nib. Interesting how the ink color per, um, looks quite has all these yellow undertones and this is clearly from some blue residue from the pen and like I said I cleaned these all of these like a maniac but uh, it was just I mean I did my best whatever happens happens now okay here comes the next green and this should be the only one of those old Kaveco Kaveco's with uh, that takes a cartridge and I fitted a Pedicon converter in there so I'm pretty excited about that that so I will I could of course fill only the converter um, but I'm gonna sucker it in through the nib so the feed is saturated right away is very different from modern double broads. Well, does one arrive? Here we go. Another one that most likely has some blue, had some blue residue. I promise I did my best in cleaning these guys. <laughs> is a little bit like a stub and I shall see how this continues because as you see there are ink flow issues could also be because of the cartridge converter I wonder oops wrong way priming the feed it shouldn't be necessary because I just filled this baby up lovely nib uh, and gr looks great when it writes and the ink is violet Iroshizuku Let's see how this continues. I will keep you posted. Next, Red Dragon, and this one with a medium nib. Piston Filler, another one that was old. Overturning the piston filler, we shall see. <laughs> Let's see if it fills or not. If not, it goes aside to be fixed. I know it had sucked water in. All of these did, but now it's giving me trouble.
Not anymore. Okay. Does it have some ink or not? Interesting. Well, I will have to investigate later. from that store with, oh my God, look at my hands. Somebody's going to think I slaughtered myself. Memory Lane, Shimmer, Broad Nib, Piston Filler. with my hands totally messed up. gifted to me from from my pen friend Des. Thank you to everybody who helps me out with inky gifts. Memory lane. Love, love, love. Okay, that's definitely a winner here. Love how this one writes. Broad. Almost like a stub. See a little more. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. Where should we go on? Okay, this is one that I'm really excited about, but I do not know if it works because it may have been a used pen that was given to the store to repair and they never repaired but instead maybe gave a new pen but we can't do anything but to try it out i love these pens okay let's do this ancient copper with this one piston filler too
This is a Kaveco Elite. From this, like I said, from the same store. issues. Hmm. Let's see how this will play out in the long run when I actually use it. Diamond mine ancient copper. Beautiful pen. And that's a 14 14k nib. And the body has this beautiful patterning. Lovely. Next is the Polish Inko pen. Let's see what happens with this inking because I'm a little bit worried. put it in the ink, pull this up, and it should fill. This was a flea market find. And did it fill? It did not. Okay, let's do this again. Maybe over here, just in case. I guess I didn't, I guess I had not put it into the ink far enough, maybe, on that first try. Close that back. Close the ink. And I, so far so good. Definitely a fine nib. And this one also from Finstello Flea Market. And the ink is Diamine Steel Blue. Oh, this is lovely. Very, writes very well. Nice. I am normally the person who tends toward the bra, who goes for the broader nibs and the broader leaks, but this one, definitely a winner, yeah. Put that one away, and next is one of those vintage stock fountain pens, a Pelican Silvexa, does it have a number on it? 20. I already have one of these and probably also with the same nib size but I will see the Atramantis is the ink Virgo which I haven't used I am ashamed to admit because I've had this ink for quite some time it's embarrassing even though it has no markings. And that's the 
Atramentus. Virgo. Really great green color. And here comes another green. the little vintage cave go with the broad oblique nib. This came in a set that I showed you before, but um, I put that aside out of space reasons here on my little desk by the window. All right, this was definitely one I could never get these, get it completely clean. Uh, it is like I said can't I can only do my best all right and I put shimmer inks also in vintage pens because it's I mean whatever it is what it is if I fill it with a non shimmer ink next time then I it doesn't bother me if there's a shimmer residue if I don't manage to get it all clean, so that's okay. So here we have an, it's probably a gold nib. I was a little bit concerned because the nib has been really, um, oops, sorry. It has a little bit of damage, so I hope it's gonna write okay. And here in the back, you see the nib size. Oh my goodness, okay. Okay, here we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Okay. Okay. Here we go, Cave Go Sport. This is, this definitely has an issue. We will see. I may have to bring that to someone to fix it. And that's okay. That can happen. That's the pros and the cons of buying a vintage pen. Hopefully it was just at the beginning and now it'll be fine. I don't mind a juicy pen, but it's not supposed to do this. What you see here, of course. We'll see how that plays out. Another Kaveco. I really, I'm super excited about this guy. This was obviously new with the old original price of twelve fifty, which I'm sure was Marks Deutsche Marks, and it is a. It's labeled V2. It's gray and it has a medium oblique nib, uh, semi hooded. Oh, so pretty. I love that it's gray because all of my others are black. All right, and it's supposed to get a special ink, special color. More color, more ink on my fingers probably in a second. <laughs> all right, let's see how this works. Ferris wheel press, double raspberry. I 
think I'm a bit traumatized by this here. <laughs> Ooh, scratchy, scratchy. Or I'm not holding it right. I'm kind of used to these guys sometimes. Maybe this one has what everybody calls a sweet spot, so I shall see because I love it too much to give up on it. And now last but certainly not least, my two Mont Blancs. And I have pulled out Birmingham Pen Company inks. They have my heart. I have not yet used the milkweed. It's a new to me ink. So So it has the model here on the on the cap and I love this. <laughs> All right, let's do this. I found a marking with the M somewhere on the body earlier, but now I don't find it anymore. Definitely said M. Nice, slightly soft nib, very juicy, and a bit flexible. I like it. Birmingham Pen Company Milkweed. I normally like these oblique nibs, but I was a little bit disappointed with this one at the first try. This one, on the other hand, fabulous. So we'll see how it will be to use all of these. And now we have the, the 12, no, it has a doesn't have a screw on cap. Let's hope that this one writes. There is a quite substantially visible gap on the double broad nib. Come on. So I took a, I picked a lighter ink because they sure need a broader stroke to show up on the paper nicely. Ago, I got a, a, a sample from my friend Casey, and um, it was Birmingham Pen Company salmon hors d'oeuvre, and that looked quite similar. 
pick the ink color. So let's see how this baby writes. Let's hope it writes. Oh, and yet again, you can tell there was still some ink residue in there. Does not bother me. It's to be expected when you have a vintage pen and you, I don't know, I cleaned, like I said, I cleaned them all many, many, many times. And it will be fine. Birmingham Pen Company, sweetheart. Wonderful, you guys, we have done it. There you go. Here they all are, all of these new pens. You witnessed the good and the bad, and um, I'm looking forward to telling you more about how these have been in writing. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.